This video is a supplement to writing material balance solutions in lecture notes 2 and 3 in topic 3. In lecture notes 2 and 3, three problems have been discussed where one of the problems had a single unit around which we drew dotted lines and two problems had multiple units. The importance of following guidelines has been described in the lecture notes. Adopt a basis is normally the first step. A good basis is one that can make solution of the problem easier and saves time. Basis can be related to any stream. In the distillation problem, a feed of 100 pound molds per hour was taken as a basis while in the strawberry problem, one pound mass of product was the basis. 100 pound mole per hour was directly given in the problem, but 1 pound mass was not. And instead, 60 pound mass per hour was the product flow rate given in the problem. In the laundry problem, 100 pound mass of dirty shirts was given, but only part of it, which was 2 pound mass of dirt, was taken as a basis. Once the basis is adopted, the unknown stream flow amounts or rates are assumed in accordance with the units of the basis. In the distillation problem, they are all in pound mole per hour as you see, while in the laundry problem, they are all in pound mass. In the main flow chart, all labels are shown and detailed here. Sometimes one may decide to partially label the main flowchart in order to avoid crowding of it. An alternative main flowchart for the laundry problem is given, as you see, where composition of streams are not shown here and postponed for later. Based on the main flowchart, we need to decide what systems should be selected in order to do DOF analysis then write the balance equations and finally solve the problem. The laundry problem is asking for the amount of pure WISO, which is M2, and the composition of the recycled stream, stream 6. If we draw a dotted line around the entire system, the streams crossing the boundary, the basis that we have, M2, which is one of the unknowns in the problem, stream 5, and the stream 7. A sub flowchart of the system is here, as you see, only the stream crossing the boundary are shown, and we have fully labeled it. The compositions are added here. The unknowns for this system are M2, M7, X7, and M5 for unknowns. We can write two balance equations because we have assumed two components of dirt and WISO for this problem, and two process specifications are given in the problem. Let's see if they are related to this stream. One of them is the washing removes 95% of the dirt in the dirty shirts. This obviously will involve stream 5. That is one unknown for our system, so this process specification can make an equation for our system. Another one is, for each 100 pound mass of dirty shirts, 25 pound mass of WISO leaves with the clean shirts, of which 22 pound mass is wrung back into the top. This will involve stream 7. That is also good process specification for this system. Therefore, we can write two balance equations, which are independent, and also two process specifications, that is four equations, and then the number of unknowns are for M2, M7, X7, and M5. So we have four unknowns. 
and the degree of freedom will be zero. That means this system can be solved for the unknowns. After solving, all of them will be considered known for the next step, the degree of freedom analysis for another system. So with the solution of this system, one of the questions in the problem, which was M2, is already answered. The next question in the system involves stream 6, which is the recycle stream. This stream is coming to the mixing point that we see here. So maybe we can adopt a system and draw a dotted line and try to prepare a subflow chart as you see here. We fully now label the subflow chart. The compositions are now added. We see there are three unknowns, M3, M6, and X6. We can write two balance equations, and those are the only equations we can write. So the system has got three unknowns and two equations, and therefore it is under specified and may not work. So at this point, we cannot solve this system for the unknowns. Let's try another system that may give us one of these unknowns. We may be able to come back to it. Let's try the top. We will see that M3, one of the unknown, is going to the top. Therefore, top may be an appropriate system to adopt here. Note that we have drawn the boundary of the system so that this recycle back to the top is inside the system in order to reduce the complications and only tackle the streams that we want which are around this system. The streams crossing the boundary with the unknown are M3 and M4, two unknowns here. Since M7 and X7 are already solved for, so they are not considered unknown anymore. In our DO of analysis for this system, we have two equations and two unknowns. The two equations are the balance equations. We can solve for M3 and M4. Once we have this, we may go back and try the mixing point again. At this point, M3 is not unknown anymore. We can solve for M6 and X6, two unknowns with the two balance equations. There is a note at the end of lecture note 2. There it says in most cases the number of independent balance equations that we can write is equal to the number of components. There are some exceptions here. One of them is when a stream splits. So a stream comes here and splits into two. In this case, the number of independent balance equations may not be same as the number of components. Another exception is when two streams of known composition join to make a third stream. This is an exception as well. Also, a picture is given here. In this picture, two streams are coming to a mixing point to give a third stream. As we see, the composition of A is known on all the streams. We have three components, A, B, and C. So as we previously ruled, we can write three independent balances. However, that is not true because we have to count out A and we can only write two independent balances for this problem. 